glad to see you. I'm very glad to see you as well. Thank you for inviting me. You're sure welcome. Thank you for accepting our invitation. So how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've been uh, a lot of work, a lot of play, a lot of James Bond things, as you know, since you follow me <laughs> on my social channels, you poor thing. Hello, David Tritsky for the Bond Experience. Today on our YouTube, I've got an incredibly special interview. I absolutely loved this interview. What about you? How have you been? Wrapped up with work. Yes. And also starting this amazing project with you right now. This is fun. Yeah, this yeah. is fun. So, David, so you mentioned Bond. Yes. So, do you consider uh, Bond to be uh, a brand? I do consider it to be a brand. I mean, it, it's interesting too because I think Bond is a movie brand in and of itself. It started out, as you know, as a literary brand. So the, the writings of Ian Fleming. And he was all around what you and I are talking about tonight, which is the appreciation of great food, of great drink, of great people and conversations. And Fleming you know, built an oasis to that in Jamaica and Goldeneye. And then there he had this inspiration to take a character that would embody every part of those aesthetics, as you put, these grand aesthetics, and that is James Bond. And then, when the movies came out, it gave people in the 1960s a way to escape. I mean, think about the 1960s, all the trouble that was going on, much like now, uh, war, politics, religion, and James Bond allowed them to escape, to have those moments. And today, it's not that much different than back in the 50s and 60s, where James Bond is a brand that is a filter that allows people to catapult out of their daily life for a few hours and escape. Sure, uh, agreed with that. By the way, how do you like your Bordeaux? I love it. <laughs> I, I snuck a couple sips beforehand. Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Thank you for, <laughs> we will be drinking on this video, just FYI, <laughs> very Bondian. Very good. Is this one of your favorites? Um, I was getting ready for this uh, conversation and yeah. I did some research. So, Did you finish a bottle while you did the research? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> of course. You appreciate it. <laughs> it yeah, was very challenging. <laughs> yes. I was trying to correspond, okay? Understood. So, yeah, uh, so as we were talking about branding and stuff, um, and, um, I'm asking you questions uh, from the branding point of view because we are the we are about this, right? Yeah. Um, now, do you consider do you consider yourself the Bond experience to be a kind of a personal branding, or is it just a hobby, passion? What is it? That's a real. You know, I will say you're the first person that's asked me that, and it's a tough one because. At the foundation, this is my hobby and passion. So when I wake up in the morning, the reason I can create content and the things that you see is because there's something, a creative itch that I need to scratch. And so it's my passion and it is my hobby. I don't play golf. I don't, I don't do other things other than James Bond, my family and, and work. But I will say that I think over time, it's become a brand. So my brand can touch people. My brand connects with other brands. My brand can act as a megaphone and speak to the world. So in some ways, I do treat it as a brand with the respect that a brand is yeah. due. You see, when I was uh, discussing this conversation with my team, yeah. I said, this guy is amazing. He has the brightest example of a successful personal branding. Oh. And um, it's so even you know my compliments to you that I can see truly that it's your passion and my question to you is how did it how did this passion turn into something that you're engaged in that you have partnerships with uh, that there's some kind of lifestyle that you are showing and people are following it how did it all, when was this turning point? <laughs> you know, I, I would love to say that there was a, um, they call that a light switch moment, where something happens, you know, just, you wake up one morning and boom, you're there, you're a brand. It's, it, it, it hasn't been like that, and maybe that's a good thing. It's been a journey where 
I think there's been an evolution. So I started very simply writing things and, and putting videos out there that I enjoyed, you know, talking about products and coats that James Bond wore that I enjoyed in environments like London, different places. And I thought, I never thought that anybody would enjoy watching this. I kind of did it for myself. And then suddenly the followers started coming, the audience started coming, brands took notice. Brands started sending me things to review and unbox. And Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, my, my wife, you know, talks about it all the time, not in a haughty way, just in the sense that it, it's Christmas every day at the Zeritsky household or Hanukkah, <laughs> whatever you celebrate out there. But it is in the sense that packages show up and these brands are very generous and they will send items, you know, suits and watches and things like that to review. But it's also transactional. Like they know that there's an audience that really drink this in. I, I will tell you one thing that makes it special. So you asked a question, I am going to answer it. When I knew that this was reaching a lot of people is when I received an email, this was years ago, from a gentleman who was a traveling salesman. And he wasn't home at much. And he said, the one thing that brought him home was um, the Bond Experience video would come out. And it would just make him feel at home because he would always watch it with his son. So when he was on the road in a hotel, he would put on a Bond Experience video. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is touching people in all types of lives. And that's when I knew, like, it was something successful. Do you think that uh, in, at some point you can call yourself an influencer? <laughs> All right, this is a great question. We're going to get into this <laughs> because people out there hate the word influencer and you know this. Yeah. An influencer <laughs> is a marketing term sure. and all it means in a very innocent way is that this individual uh, through emulation where somebody sees you driving a nice car or you look good, you use mm -hmm. that lipstick or you drink the Bordeaux and they go, I want to be more like them, so I'm going to buy this. This is how it works. This right? is how it works, right. Yeah. But people hate that because they think influencers are evil. Influencer is a marketing term, it's not evil. So realistically, I am an influencer. Do, if I post a review and people see the review of an item, they often go out and buy it. There have been brands that have sold out of items after I've done a review of an item. Uh, Billy Reed is a brand and they sell out of their Billy Reed pea coats. They're $900 a piece and they can't keep them in stock because of these reviews that I do. So I know it, it, it really bothers people to call influencer, but technically I am, but I don't call myself an influencer. I call myself a content creator because to me that's more artistic. Yeah, uh, influencer sounds more cliche. It, it, it's Kim yeah. Kardashian. Yeah. And my butt is really small. <laughs> so I am not Kim Kardashian. That's a good one. <laughs> not existent, actually. So. Thank you for that. It was a good job. Sh Oversharing, I guess. But. <laughs> yeah, so how did it all start then? Um, I blame my father, as I often do. No, I, well, so I had a very entrepreneurial father, very successful. Um, but he wasn't the type to play baseball in the backyard. But he did, whenever there was a James Bond movie, he would bring me in to watch the James Bond movie. And with these amazing, as you called it, bonding moments mm -hmm. with my father. And I always held that moment very close to me. And so when I became older and I had some spending money and could start to live the Bond lifestyle, um, this is something I gravitated to. And probably to kind of capture, I'm a very nostalgic person, so probably to capture those moments with my father. And that's kind of how it started. The channel really started in earnest because when I was in my early 30s and became a young executive and finally had some folding cash, I could go out and buy some props and watches and things like that. And I wanted to just talk more about it. So the channel kind of blossomed from that. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, as long as we know each other, I've never heard the story about you and your dad. I yeah. It's not, the, it's not a first encounter discussion. Of course. It's yeah. usually somewhere, like now, but thank in you front of the camera. Yeah, but yeah, we forgot the cameras. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, as we were It's a very Barbara Walters moment, by the way. <laughs> it's like I should be looking at the camera. Camera one, you start crying, but I'm not going to. <laughs> what? That's a good one. Okay, so going back to your... Um, story um, and Brendan uh, the question that I was thinking about yeah. uh, for a while um, 
you make all those wonderful videos, you engage audience, you uh, talk to people, you, you influence is a bad word, right? But you can use it. Make, We've already established it's real. Yeah, that some people just can wait to get home and watch something to participate in your numerous things. You have podcasts, you have uh, book clubs. That, that I personally watched, right? And I'm so sorry. It was, no. I feel like there should be restitution for you. No, no. You're First okay? Of all, You're okay? No, I'm super good. Mark safe from book club? <laughs> right. No, I want to be a member of your book club. Wow. Because you guys, uh, you're fun. You, you kind of have your drinks, uh, you discuss nice books. That's uh, Fleming main, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll start reading something about James Bond. Okay. Uh, but still. Okay, so my question um, that I was thinking about is um, the branding and the lifestyle. Mm. So I see that it's it's kind of a lifestyle. Um, so is it, do you, do you keep up to this lifestyle of, bond, of a bond? Of James is bond. it a bond lifestyle that you're leading or uh, is it just a part of your, of a hobby that you're showing to us only, you know? Right. What is it? What is your typical day? That's good. Well, there's like three major questions. <laughs> Sit back, buckle yeah. up. Um, yeah. So first of all, um, I don't consider myself living a Bond lifestyle. I, I think I've been incredibly influenced, there's that word, by James Bond. So a lot of my clothes, the clothes I'm wearing tonight, this top, is a brand, a James Bond brand, my shoes, my watch. Hey, I was uh, trying to match you somehow. You know did, you, know, did, you did good. good. You look actually very Roger Moore with the, the, the breasted suit. So Thank you. double breasted. <laughs> um, but I'm wearing even James Bond socks with little James Bonds on them. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got my, ready. <laughs> I, I did get ready, but this is typically what I actually wear, and it's because my closet is filled with James Bond stuff. Uh, my watch case is filled with James is Bond this watches. Is something that you bought from the movies? Or? Sure. Yeah, I collected it over time. It was either gifted or purchased. But so to me, I don't get up in the morning going, "I need to dress like James Bond." I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I don't say like. How do I look like Daniel Craig today? Because um, that would be crazy. And I even tell people in my videos, like, don't do that. Dress for David Zaritsky, dress for you. So this has become very natural, but people in the know understand that I've adopted a lot of these clothing and styles. The cut of my pants, the cut of a suit, the brands that I go to are James Bond brands. In my mind, I'm basically saying, if it's good enough for James Bond, it's good enough for anybody. And, and to your point, um, I tend to gravitate to those Bond lifestyle moments, but I don't consciously get up in the morning going, time to dress like James Bond. <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't do that. I Just can't. Just take off your gun. Yeah, because they call Agent that. Not <laughs> that's right. I don't wear a gun to work. That would be crazy. Yeah. I stop there. But don't you think that this aesthetics in yeah. clothing, in, in Omega, in. Uh, Aston, you have a car. I, I do. Know. I have an Aston Martin. Yeah. You do. I do. But this is the Bond aesthetics. It is. It is. And I've adopted the Bond aesthetics, but I think there's a point when you live the Bond lifestyle that the two start to blend in. You don't know where one stops and where one begins. So if I looked at myself in a mirror, I could definitely spot the James Bond moments. Mm -hmm. But to me, they become, I hate to say it, David Zaritsky moments. Mm -hmm. You know, Shaw, Carter, Car uh, Shaw Collard Cardigan, say that 17 times twice, um, <laughs> is something that I've adopted from James Bond. But honestly, it's become so indelible to me that when my family and my friends and even my work colleagues see me, they're like, that's a David look. They don't mm -hmm. go, that's a Bond look. Okay. And for me, like, when I wear an Omega watch, I'm not looking at it going, oh good, I'm wearing a James Bond watch. I, I look down and I go, this is my escape. Yeah. You know, I could be sitting here during the day and I think, oh, James Bond, sure. and I'm elsewhere. Yeah, it was interesting for me, where's this borderline, you know, between um, what you really love, your passion, and how, um, how it should be present in your real life, yes. you know, how, how you should differentiate between yes. those, you know. So how does David Zoritsky differentiate between and makes this balance between the real life uh, 
real life, your people, your family, yeah. and um, your 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 personal branding and presence of bond on social media and everywhere. Yeah, there's. I think it's about setting expectations. So one of the things, for example. Um, if I'm going somewhere, if I'm doing something, let's say I'm, I'm filming one of the videos that you've seen, um, very often on the weekends I'll go down and I, I may say to my wife, I'm going downstairs for a few hours, I'm going to be filming some videos. I'll be up by 11 o'clock. So maybe from 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock I'll be filming videos. That's my video time that I'll do that. Great. Then we'll go take a walk in the park. We'll go do something in the evening. We'll go out, we'll meet, you know, nice people out for restaurant moments. <laughs> So I do carve it out almost like you would a job in the morning, um, and this is going to freak your audience out, but I'll get up in the morning anywhere from 3 to 5 a.m. That You're reading my mind right now okay. because I know uh, I follow you on Instagram and for the past few weeks I've been watching the, your, when your videos are coming out. Yeah. It's like this guy is posting a video at 4 a.m. Yeah. When That's not unusual. When do you sleep? I do sleep. I sleep a lot. So I... <laughs> okay, so how do you handle it? Like, how do you manage all yeah. this? Yeah, so I would love to do like a Tony Robbins thing right now and go, oh, I With only hands? get three hours sleep <laughs> with the giant hands coming at the camera. Right. It's not going to happen. It is ugly. Sorry. My sleep habit is ugly. So, all right. First of all, when, I, when I'm watching TV, I take cat naps in between movies. <laughs> So I don't know do do? the last time, yeah, I don't know the last time I've seen a whole movie. So I'll take little cat naps, but mm -hmm. then I'll go to sleep at a reasonable time, like 10 o'clock. Like, I don't know the last time I've seen like 11, 11, 30. Like, I'm in this wonderful environment where they probably start partying at 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m., I'm hitting like hard REM. Mm -hmm. But there's something that gets me up, and it's always, um, it's always something that's not bad. Like, I don't wake up from a bad dream and go, I gotta get up it's always my mind just starts worrying and I can't shut it off until I do something. And very often it's something like a post or a video to quiet my mind because my mind has trouble hushing itself. And so I get up and I have a rule. I have one rule. My rule is if you get up and you check your phone, you get up out of bed. It could be two o'clock in the morning and I have. It could be three o'clock, it could be, be 4.30 but you get up out of bed and you do something with your life. That's a really good point. I think our audience will appreciate this one a lot. Or um, put me in an institution. I don't know which. <laughs> it's either way. mentioned that you're waking up and you need to do something yeah. and it's also uh, something that keeps you consistent on on the media that's and true everywhere right and you have this constant communication with your audience yes um, how important and how much time you should actually uh, dedicate yeah. to, to this process so I'd answer it like this, there are two, two ways I would answer. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, people start these type of things and the first thing they think about is, I need a certain amount of followers or I need as much visibility that David has or they can compare themselves to impossible comparisons. And I would say, dance like nobody's watching. That whole adage of, you know, put your content out there that pleases you. Just make yourself happy. And for consistency's sake, if you have time, you know, if you have babies and you're doing all these things and, and, and a hard new job and you can only post once a week or once a month, that's enough for you. Don't think about, I need to post a certain amount because the brands aren't going to send me something. Like, in other words, have very specific individual internal goals. And my, my, my point to anybody starting this out is, please do this if it makes you happy. Be your best audience. When I, when I come in the morning and I think of a video to do, and, and people multiple times a day will send me requests to do videos. Do this video, do that video. 
And I don't mean to be mean, but I ignore them all because I need to please this guy right here and think about what are the videos that I'm itching to do. So I do things that not a, pe not a lot of people would want to watch. I've done interviews that not a lot of people would want to watch. And then, yeah, every now and then I'll interview Daniel Craig and then everybody wants to watch that. But those are far and few between. I do what makes me happy without compromise. I have no partners. I don't have a sidekick. I don't have anybody telling me that thumbnail is wrong, that font is wrong. How dare you put a post at 4 a.m.? You should put it at 10 a.m. when more of your audience is on. Screw them. This is my world. So I control this world, and there's so very little that we can control in this world. I mean, look at this. We're experiencing a war. You know, we're experiencing hardship and politics, and we can't control so many things. But what the best part of social media is you're controlling your own small world. And I would say take pleasure in that to those people. And that's why we thought that it's a super great uh, example um, of how a personal branding, if you call it, I don't know. It, sure. I know that it sounds very like marketing-like, but still, the personal branding, it's your personal life, your it personal is. branding, and you're not letting it in, anybody interfere into that. That's right? right. And that's an important part because um, there was a time that I was putting like pictures of like Daniel Craig and Sean Connery only on my thumbnails and then what I started to do was put myself in there and I think what happens is when you put yourself out there people can empathize with you they can identify with you because you're a real person I mean you're a real person right now um, and I think people love that they love imperfections that's true that's the latest trend actually about imperfections it is <laughs> I'm the epitome of imperfections yeah sometimes. everything about me is imperfect Sometimes I talk to my team and it's like, oh, you should change the font. You should you should do the several things, you know. How dare but I know it's about some kind of company and thing, you know. Yeah. But when it comes to me personally, I know that I would like like myself to be in this light, mm -hmm. right? We know nobody knows us better than ourselves. That's right. Your agree? right side is better than your left side, you right? I think so. I no. Arena. Hogwash. How do I look like? Do I look it's, amazing? It's the aesthetics. She says, yeah, aesthetics. Yeah. But you, th you see, aesthetics, it's, it's when you appreciate beauty. You appreciate good wine, good food, yes. and good company, right? Yeah. Correct. How important it is. Um, but that's life, and I think that's part of also why I like James Bond. James Bond is an appreciator of beautiful things in life because he may die the next day. He's an assassin, he's a spy. Um, there's a great Ian Fleming line that said, uh, James Bond has murder for breakfast. And very the, sophisticated. Very sophisticated. Yeah. So if you know that you could be murdered the very next day, what would your life be like? You would drink the best wines. Mm -hmm. you, would, you would go to a place like this and have a raving party. You would have the best food. Uh, remember one time I asked you, how do you, like, how do you perceive this and how do you deal with it? Why do you think this or that? And you told me, okay, uh, Anna, I just think that tomorrow, like, the car is going to run over me or something yeah, is going to happen. That's true. The brake fall of, over me. You've right? got to take those moments. And by the way, I'm my own worst offender. So I have this channel where I speak to people. You've heard some of the podcasts and I try to like, I, I try to keep things very positive. That's one thing about my channel. And I try to tell people about how they can see life. Um, you know, you have to take these moments. You almost have to stop yourself and just take the, the moment to enjoy these little tiny moments. Like we just had a wonderful cheese plate and I was going around it like a geographical location. This type of cheese and what is that? And oh, that's got honey in it. And you have to take that appreciation as opposed to let me check another work email you know, which is just gonna create so much grizzle and stress. And that's the greatest thing about James Bond. It forces you to be in the moment with people and with, with great food and it's just, it's, it's an exhale. Yeah, you're just, right now you have drawn parallels to James Bond and how he treats life, right? Yeah. Um, here's the question to you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> What are the best traits of James Bond you think are? Like, name three of them. Okay, so it's not misogyny and it's not murder. 
Um, <laughs> no, I think I think one of the the traits of James Bond is that he takes great appreciation in beautiful things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a line right from Fleming. He does appreciate all the wonderful nature locations and the best people. I think that's an amazing trait. I think James Bond is also very resourceful. Mm -hmm. um, as somebody that, you know, we both have our own businesses, for example, uh, you have to be incredibly resourceful and tenacious in everything that you do. Um, you have to zig when other people zag, and that's James Bond. I love that aspect to him. But I think the biggest thing is that James Bond, uh, he, he is the epitome of the lifestyle of escapism, mm -hmm. but also just enjoying fine things. And it doesn't have to be, and I want to put this as an asterisk to your audience and mine, it, that doesn't say it doesn't, need, it doesn't have to be expensive things. Mm -hmm. It has to be things that give you joy and pleasure. And you could buy a, um, a $10 bottle of wine if it makes you happy and it makes your company happy and it creates great conversations. That, to me, is a James Bond moment. And that's probably one of the things that we should all embrace. So in 60s and 70s, escapism was a trend. Yes. Um, and it was James Bond's lifestyle. Right now, James Bond's lifestyle and appreciation of good things, it's something that is su a super trend right now. People yes. love to watch and the digital world, it made it happen. We can observe beautiful things. Yeah. We can um, watch and appreciate them, and uh, some people even pretend having them. They do. <laughs> and that's a problem. I mean, that's, that is something to be discussed because one of the things I put in my recent podcast, I do these morning podcasts where I just, the first thing that comes to mind, it's like a roar shack test. I just start recording the podcast, and I talked about, I wanted people, especially my audience, to know that when they see a picture of me, it is the best angle i probably taken 10 pictures of me and i picked the best of the 10. Um, there's often lighting, right? There's often things to like get rid of this line. And I wanted them to know that they're having fun with the channel and I want them to have fun and I'm gonna put my best foot forward. But honestly, they're not seeing the imperfection of David. They're seeing the best version of me. When they see me go out to my car, my car is washed perfectly. They're not seeing when it gets tar all over it. So my point being is like, understand that this is not quite the real world. In some ways, the real world is so much better because you and I just talked before we came on here of loving and appreciating imperfection. You know, a, no a nose is not perfect, it's disjointed. You know, I have a blemish this morning. I, I nicked myself shaving. <laughs> I've got an eruption right here. That's okay because that's, that's a part of actually accepting who I am and who I'm not. When you see me on Instagram, you're seeing perfection. So it's just to tell people, like, don't go and say, I need to get to that level. You're at that level. If you're enjoying your life, you're there already. So would you state that the aesthetics um, is to be real? And yes. To be beautiful the way you are? Yep, and put as many filters on you as possible. Yes. I'm trying to. Sorry. What? <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. I. It, but that's going to be very natural because the problem with us, and, and I'm including myself in this, is that through vanity and through understanding that a lot of people are watching, um, you feel in the back of your head like someone's judging you. Chances are they're not. So chances are they're appreciating you. But your mind is saying they're judging you. So you're like, they're going to see this thing. Um, someone recently apologized to me for something that I didn't even see on them, for example. And I'm like, you look fine, I would have never seen that. And so it's, it's what's here in your head that plays the tricks that makes us do those things. In this terms, uh, for the beginners yeah. that are going to film themselves, to put them out there on social media, to show their world, to share their yes. world and passion with others, what would your advice be? Uh, if they're scared, for example, I'm scared, I'm scared of this camera. But not I anymore, know how right? To start because you and I are just having a conversation. And a good wine. And good wine. Yeah. It's not so horrific, right? Not too horrific. Yeah, they don't, I mean, we love them, but they don't quite exist right now. So it's fine. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, but I will say this. So the first thing I would say is um, take a risk. So to put yourself on camera, to put yourself out there, I have so many people who say to me, 
um, I would love to start my own YouTube channel or my own Instagram. I don't know where to start and I'm afraid to show myself. And I said, that's fine. Um, make mistakes. Go into it knowing that you're going to trip like I have. I make so many mistakes. One of my most popular videos, and I'll never forget this, is when I threw up a YouTube video and I forgot to fully edit it. So you see me like go, and this has been David Zritzi for The Bot Experience. We'll see you real soon. And then I walk off and you see me just like shutting off the light, unplugging <laughs> things, and then like walking upstairs and the camera was still going. And I, right now people would think that it's like, huh, it's a real trick. Well, it, it's I'll like, what, and then I went to go edit it. And I actually like put an Instagram. I apologize for my mistake. And people said, we loved it. We loved it because it was real. Like we thought, we, it was like we were in the room watching you. So from then on, I started to keep the ums and the ahs and I didn't edit things so much. And when I do my videos, I don't, I, I don't have a script. Mm -hmm. I don't have bullet points. I don't have cue cards. It's like this. I have a conversation with a mechanical piece of technology and I mess up and people love it because it's real. So right now you seem to be very confident in front of the camera. I, I know you mess up, but, but I'm talking I, to you. Yeah, I, I don't notice it personally. I'm listening to you and you seem to be very confident, very laid back and very, you know, assuring. Um, how long did it take you to, to get to this? Uh, Just point? now, this has been a big moment for me. No. Oh. <laughs> um, I, as I say to people, lost, <laughs> lost my embarrassment gene very early like in my early 30s, because I would have to present to people and go up and make mistakes. And it was live, it was like, it was like being in a play, it was like theater. Mm -hmm. And um, so the other thing that came over my head in becoming easier to do this was, nobody out there in the audience uh, can fire me or give me a, a horrible disease if I mess up. So what are the consequences, really? I'm gonna embarrass myself? Who cares? Who cares what they think? No offense. But, you know, the reality is, is that, again, we're our own worst enemies. You're doing an amazing job. Maybe you were nervous before this, and now we're having an amazing conversation. This is a fun video for everybody. There was nothing to worry about to begin with. It was here. Well, you made this conversation very comfortable. Oh. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, coming back to Bond. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, Bond. Uh, what is your favorite scene from Bond? My favorite scene? And or part. Um, I do like the movie Casino Royale, mm -hmm. but actually my favorite scene out of the entire franchise mm -hmm. is um, a, a movie that not a lot of Bond fans like. It's called Quantum of Solace. And there is a, and I'll tell you why I like it. There's a hotel fight where Bond breaks into a hotel and he comes in and there's a guy hiding behind a curtain and he just gets into this very brutal fight and Bond, the guy has a knife and Bond has a shoe. He has a shoe. I mean, really, you know, a shoe. <laughs> so he uses a shoe to whack the heck out of the guy. Then he takes um, a nail scissor that he finds on the floor and he winds up killing the guy, like hitting him in different arteries and just lets him bleed out. And it's a small scene, but what I, what I love about that scene is it shows the brutality of Bond, mm -hmm. that Bond should be a badass. You know, he should be able to handle himself with a shoe. I mean, it, it's again, getting back to that whole thing of what I like about Bond, mm -hmm. that he's resourceful. To me, that's the most amazing thing. And I like that even better than a lifestyle moment. Like Sean Connery in a three-piece suit looks great. It's a great moment. DB5, Aston Martin, mm -hmm. beautiful car. But to me, it's the resourcefulness and the badass nature of Bond that I love. Do you apply anything from that in your real life? Um, I Are do. you a badass? Totally life? not. No, I am. What is the opposite of a badass? <laughs> a good ass? I don't know. And we talked about that before. Um, not so much. So, no, I'm, I'm so not a badass. I think I'm a nice guy, but um, I can be cool under pressure. I can be very resourceful in discussions. So my weapon is my words, I think, and my thinking. Um, I like to think I have a quick thinking, so that's where I become resourceful. Um, can I handle myself in a fight? Maybe, like I've taken martial arts and I know weaponry and things like that, and I think I probably could, but um, I hope nobody comes out of the kitchen to test that, because they look <laughs> like they the could knife. kick ass, yeah. Mm -hmm. um,
but take off your shoe. Yeah, <laughs> this thing's not coming off without like major application. <laughs> but I think um, there are certain things of Bond that I do apply in my everyday life. Um, the panache, mm -hmm. um, even certain things of making people feel calm under pressure. So in a leadership role like you're in, bad things happen. They happen every day, stress. So you could either explode and freak out, or you could be very focused and tenacious and keep things calm. Exactly. So if you watch Bond movies, whatever happens, the world is uh, like exploding. He's calm. He's calm. He's, super He's walking calm. away from the explosion. Yeah. Behind him, yeah. Like, and we are watching, we are observing Bond, yeah. and it's like, how, how is this possible? How is he doing That's that? That's right. The only, di well, the huge difference between Bond and I, as people can tell from this video, Bond has an economy of movements. I kind of have that. And Bond has an economy of words. He doesn't talk much, mm -hmm. and I do. So Where I don't is that, that man? I want such a man, please. That has an economy of words, <laughs> yeah. right? So you don't want a man to talk too much. Yeah, more actions. Yeah, well, you're throwing me off the show because all I'm doing is talking. That was on the basis of commercial. That's right. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> So, uh, who are those people who are supplying you with those wonderful requisites from yeah. Bondiana and what else they are doing? By the way, I'm going to use Bondiana because that is a thing that needs to happen. Hashtag Bondiana. Oh. Um, the world of Bond is, is now becoming Bondiana tonight. Mark the date. All right. <laughs> So, um, first of all, you, you mentioned clothing, watches, things like that. We've been so blessed to have people send us to locations, um, to, to really document the location, to experience wonderful hotel rooms and resorts and food. Dude, so this is for real. Actually, you are turning your passion into uh, something that brings you wonderful experiences. Oh yes, they've flown us around the world and um, places in Jamaica, places uh, in uh, sold in Austria, places in Switzerland, um, different locations from around the world. A lot of them, obviously, in London, mm -hmm. for example. But also, uh, I've been a part of press junkets. So I was flown just a few months ago to England to experience and talk to a lot of the celebrities, but also to drive, you know, Aston Martins and to do stunt shows and to be put up at beautiful chateaus and to talk about those things and video it. And listen, I'm, I say I'm blessed because it's wonderful that they see my channel as an outlet to talk about their brand. Because you know this all too well, this is what you yeah. do for a living. The aesthetics of things and talking about those is a bit transactional. They're not doing it because, oh, we like David, he's so cute. No, it's not that at all. It's David has an audience. Um, 35 to 55 year olds are my core audience and they have money. And so they may go to Jamaica and go to this resort, but nobody's really talking about it. And my videos, you know, somebody could come and pay a lot for a video, but somebody could go to a content creator like me and go, we're gonna put you up at a lagoon villa at a beautiful place like Goldeneye for a few nights with your wife mm -hmm. and we want you to enjoy it um, and we want you to talk about it. And the nice thing is, and I have to say I've been very, very happy with this, no brand comes to me and goes, all right, we need you to do this, 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 and this. They say, we're going to give you the environment or the sweater. Mm -hmm. You do with what you want. You're the artist. You create. That's amazing. It's amazing. And it allows me to go, oh, this is beautiful. So if I want to say this uh, sweater is itchy, I'll say this sweater is itchy. Like, I have to be very authentic about it. Yeah, it's not itching. Because when you put like a creative person or a person of art or anything into some limits, you know, sometimes it uh, turns out to be like vice versa. It's the terrible. Opposite reaction yep. to that. I had one brand do that to me. I had one brand who said, we want to do some things with you and we want to send you some things and here are the different videos we want. Here are the reactions that we want. And I said, I'm not going to do this. I'll give you a real reaction. And if I don't like your product, I'm going to say so. And they actually said, no, we're not interested then. And I was like, fine, mm -hmm. I won't drink your beer. Oops, did I say that out loud? <laughs> we now know what you're, who sort you're of, talking about. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been very positive. And, and my, seriously, my wife and I have 
traveled the world and met great friends and, and the brands themselves, we've gotten to know the people. So it's not just items. We've gotten to know the CEOs of the company, the marketing people, and they're just real people like you and I that are just trying to tell a story. I mean, this is, this is good old fashioned storytelling that we're trying to do. So they love their job and I love engaging with them. So the things that, that I'm getting from this conversation that um, amidst the world uh, of digital opportunities, of capabilities to show you, to show the world whoever you can be, yeah. like with, um, with the different approaches, right? So being real, being who you are, works the best. It does. And one thing I will add, because I do, I try to mentor a lot of people starting out in the world of video uh, and social media, is find something that's very unique to you. So there was, uh, and I'll, I'll cite by example, there was a gentleman the other day that said, I want to start my Instagram in a big way. I want to start doing videos, but I don't know what's unique about me. And I said to him, I said, tell me about your life. And he goes, well, you know, I, I take care of my child and then I go to work and, you know, I come back and I take care of my child and mm -hmm. it's really all about the family and family's really, I said, stop, mm -hmm. you're the family bond guy. You should really talk about how do you enjoy bond amidst all the different chores of toddlers and families and how do you incorporate these moments of escape into your life juggling the family dynamic you're that guy and he started a channel and now he's getting really big on instagram really and his, yeah his videos are great and he shows his little kid you know walking away from him to school and he goes okay right now's my bond time for one hour and he's amazing but it's finding to your to your point it's finding your authentic self and monopolizing on that. Me, I love the lifestyle aspect. So I open a box from a brand. I'm like a kid on a holiday morning. I open it up and people think I'm faking the smiles. I'm like, ee, ee. I just like pull stuff out. I love it. So find, find your why, find out who you are. Amazing. Yeah. And speaking about the family, you mentioned just the guy with the kids and everything else. Yeah. How does your family, um, how does your family, what is it, the family's attitude towards your... My family? Yeah, your family. This is tough because, let's see, like 11 feet away is my wife, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> so, um, I've got to be real here. No, you know what, I, I think my family is very tolerant of my hobby. Um, my lower basement has a lot of stuff, so it does create a little bit of mind clutter and maybe visual clutter. Um, but I'm allowed to have my space, which is great. Uh, I will say that, uh, and, and I think I'm being real here, Danielle has been supportive of my hobby forever. We go on vacations together, we do Bondian things. We've, we've actually made friends through this together. And um, my son and daughter have been in a lot of my videos. So they've actually been a part of my conversations. Are they big Bond fans? I would say no, but they are, they are people that appreciate that I have a passion for something. And I think that they also appreciate that I've created something that's created something relevant. You know, um, and again, I'm not bragging, I'm, this is fact. I have the number one James Bond YouTube channel. So I think that they can appreciate that I went for number one. Like, like I tried and I, I was competitive enough to say, I want, I want to have the best of this, but I want to have it for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they've accepted that well. But um, yeah, they seem to be very tolerant of it. <laughs> They're still here. Yeah. If that's your question. <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's very important to have such a support. It uh, is. In what you do. David, it's been a really wonderful conversation. But what I uh, have a little suggestion. Oh. Do you know the Blitz? The Blitz questions? The Blitz? Yeah. So. Is that a lot of little questions all at once? A lot. Like, Around five to ten little questions. It's like quick fire type Very thing. quick fire. Okay, yes. Like I ask you and you just respond very quickly. Yes. Not, like, Are we doing that? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Let me take a sip of wine. Go. Oh, okay. <laughs> an outfit. If it would be an outfit, what would it be? Um, the outfit would be uh, Tom Ford shawl collared, collared cardigan, beige pants, uh, suede chuckas. A cocktail. Uh, Vesper Martini. Vacation destination. 
Um, oh my gosh, Matera, Italy. Weekend activity. Uh, walking with my wife and hiking in the park. If you were a room, three objects in the room. Um, I would be a ladder, I would be a book, and I would be a dust bunny. Why? Why? Yeah. It, those were random. I was hoping you wouldn't ask why. <laughs> um, because my mind works differently and I wanted to prove it through my answers. Amazing answer. You know how to do that. Okay. Uh, a song. A song. Mm -hmm. um, Thunderball by Tom Jones. Okay. If, um, <laughs> if you could uh, name any quote or a motto, a mantra yes. about yourself. This one's easy. Um, always say yes to adventure. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. Yeah. I always use it, by the way. Yeah, I um, love it. And if you had to des describe uh, the Bond experience as a contradiction, um, what would it be? What do you mean as a contradiction? Um, what is controversial about Bond experience? Um, I think what's controversial about the Bond experience is my vision and my mission is to bring the Bond community together so everybody's accepted and yet I talk about luxury brands mm -hmm. which people some many people can't afford I think that's the contradiction mm -hmm. and then I try to kind of say it doesn't need to be about the luxury brands but there is a contradiction like an Aston Martin and going everybody's included is a bit of a contradiction okay got it and if you were an era what it would it be oh Gosh, my wife would say I'm the 30s or 40s, but roaring um, or yeah, I'm or, not so roaring or prohibition. I, I'm more of like the guy sitting in, in a chair listening to nah, 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 no, nah, I can't nah, believe it. Nah. A little bit. <laughs> um, no, but I would say I'm probably the 60s. I'm the 1960s. Yeah. And why? Um, <laughs> because it's an era that I, I I look at and I visualize and I say. That's an, that's a place that I would feel very comfortable. You know, the, the people, the fashion, uh, the connection. Mid-century. Yeah. You know, it's very trendy mid right now. Mid-century. It's super trendy right now. I think I'm mid-century. And I'm literally mid-century. I'm 54. No way. You knew this. No. You knew this. No. You know what keeps my skin young? No. Do you know what it is? Mm -mm. Panda placenta. What? Panda placenta. You harvest it at the zoo. Panda placenta. Is no, that's commercial? not true. Let's write it down. That's not true. That's not true. It's what keeps poison. you young? Um, I'm going to say mean, you, something. I mean, you look really good. Thank How, you. Yeah, what keeps you young? So I'm going to say something, and I'm not playing for my audience, but um, the, the happiness that my wife, who's also my best friend, creates keeps me young. Um, I think a certain amount of discipline keeps me young because I, like, I do enjoy working out. Um, and this one company called Ursa Major, which has this really good, like, moisturizer. The last question to you, uh, with all the Bandiana, with uh, your social life. Yes. I know that I have a very weird accent. No, so. I love Bandiana. You don't understand. This is going to be <laughs> hashtag. This is how it goes. Um, well, I know that aside from that, you do have a, a job, an occupation. It's how true. do you? Yeah. How does it work all together? It just gets in the way. Work gets in the way. No. Uh, it's it's. Um, huh, this is public. No. Work is a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think my competitive nature and my disciplinary nature. Disciplinary is the wrong word. My my amount of discipline. You know what I do. Um, also inspiring people. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of work is when people are inspired or they feel like they have relevance. As soon as somebody doesn't feel relevant or special or heard or seen, that to me just, it, it's a terrible situation. So it's my favorite part of my job. It's not the money, it's not the title. I, you know, when you get title and money, it becomes so much less important than connecting with people and just making people happy. What would you say to 21-year-old you? 21-year-old me? Yeah. Oh, God. What would you say? Think about the consequences. Think about people more than yourself. And cheers to that. Cheers.
this Bordeaux is good. This conversation is amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it, truly. Thank, thank you. you so the conversation much. was actually better than the Bordeaux, and the Bordeaux was really good. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Just in time. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.